three, two, one, go. Hello, welcome to Moxlet Gaming. I'll be commentating a uh, game that I played, a TBT, that I think is worthwhile to uh, commentate, and be named Game of the Day. So I'm going to start off this, um, this game, I presume, with the uh, gas first. I put the depot on the left side there, so it grants me that little bit of an extra vision in case drops come in, come in or, um, or banshees. And it is always safe from the uh, third uh, location map where tanks can kind of shell at it. So it's kind of a generally good area. Actually, I could have put a little bit more bottom left, but it, it's fine that way. So I go for a gas first. I go for a, uh, it's a marine, uh, well, barracks factory starport. Uh, all in one, uh, one shot with the gas first. I do this because Hellions is the best counter Reapers, and Reapers seem to be very uh, popular on this map because of the left side ramp. Um, it is, so Reapers are really agile, so people tend to do that. I think most of my uh, Reaper cheeses happen on this very map, so let's get that factory out. Because in my opinion, Hellions is the best counter to Reapers, because not only are they slightly faster than the Reapers, but also they have more health than Marines. They have splash damage. And uh, they can also easily, since they're fast, they can easily outrun grenades and, and split. So I think they are the best counter to, to Reapers in general. And they can be repaired too, so... Uh, uh, them defensively. So right now I have the gas, I can place on the factory immediately, and after that I can place on the starport immediately. So I can put in uh, either a medevac for aggressive purposes or a viking for aggressive purposes, depending on what I scout. So I use the scout here, I drop down the second gas, because I see that uh, he is walling, I believe, and that's what makes me want to do this, is because I want to shell up the front and be more aggressive. Uh, but my original plan was Hellions, but I do see that he's not using Reapers, so it's not much point of actually going Hellions anymore. Unless you want to go for some sort of drop. So I always open up with, uh, no matter what build I do, always open up with two Marines, and then a Reactor, if a Reactor would, were to go down, because um, if you just have one Marine into Reactor, it could be really greedy, like you like you want to get out that fast Reactor, so you can do a push with tanks and medevac or something. The downside is if they open up Reaper, you get a huge disadvantage because you only have one Marine. Uh, obviously, it depends on the rush of the map. Like, you can probably do one Marine into Reactor, like on Dust Towers, because by the time Reaper comes in, you probably have either a Hellion or two, the two Marines out, so that's fine. But on a map like this, I prefer to have two Marines before any kind of Reactor stuff. You guys remember, that gets supply blocked during the early times. Very important. Metavax is, uh, your supply boy. I go for a Banshee. I don't remember why. Oh yeah, and I go for the expansion really fast. I think that's because I scouted, again, Marines, and not an aggressive push with tanks. Um, so I go for that faster expo, which it turns out to be really good, because he was actually grabbing a really fast expansion as well, so I call it that right. Uh, I'm gonna go for Cloak. Obviously, if he scouts the cloak before uh, I hit there, I normally cancel it because I want the I want the gas. And uh, so I'm gonna go for a tank. I got enough marines. I don't really need a reactor right now, so I can go for just an extra tank. I think it's better than to drop down a reactor right now. One marine at a time is fine uh, for the early game. Plus, normally when I'm done with Banshee, I switch it up so I can start the stim with the uh, tech lab on the starport. Additional so now, I'm finally getting up the expansion. I think now I drop it. Do I drop it? Yeah, I drop it. Drop the reactor. I think it's time. Safe enough. Uh, obviously, saturation has to be perfect, so you gotta learn how to do the differences between 16 and whichever amount, number, like 21 or 19 really know that number instantly, so you can have the quickest transfer possible. So now he scans, and I'm like, uh, did he see my thing? And I believe he did, because uh, I looked at the, the range of the scan, because you can see the line now, so I saw that he saw the tech lab, and uh, that's probably a big tell. So I immediately switch up, and I go for double barracks. I want to go uh, 
uh, I want to compensate for all my teching with uh, some units, because normally that's the weakness of teching, is that you don't have a lot of solid ground units behind it, so uh, now that I want tech, I want to try and focus on uh, catching up in the marine count. Delayed the mine just a little bit, got like one SV kill. It's uh, it's fine. But, uh, it's a good thing I got the expansion rule, it's really fast. So I'm just trying to run away. And uh. Additional supply depots required. What's going on? Not enough minerals. So I think at this point I start double upgrades because I'm, I'm uh, kind of far enough behind as it is. So there you go. I keep that barracks production going. I start third. I always try to do most of these as fast as possible. Now the question is always, should I make medevacs or vikings? Now there are very uh, specific uh, times where you should make vikings. Uh, if it's for offensive purposes, it's because you're having a, a low ground, high ground kind of a battle. But when it's flat ground battles, it's a lot better to have medevacs because that's where you maneuver the best. Um, so right now I'm going to go for medevacs. Yeah, so I try to expand as fast as possible. I can tell he's not expanding. Uh, I have quite a bit of vision on the map right now. I have on his third, on his other third, if possible. And I have one at the bottom left to scout for drops if they come in. That's always good. Pay attention to the mini-map. You have this double drop here. Um, this better be good. I think it's because I saw the... Uh, when I scouted him with the Banshee, I didn't see kind of any preemptive turrets, so I don't know if he added any more turrets. Um, either or not, this was a job that I was going to commit to. If there was turrets, I could simply just turn around and try and poke the third or something. Just kind of keep him busy as he's slightly more stretched up than before. Um, so I'll scan here, just see the depot in case he's feeling. So I'm pretty lucky here because I catch the fourth and the fifth and uh, uh, sorry, fourth and fifth barracks and try to catch that. Tank there. The tank's pretty fast actually on movement speed. Shift click back, cancel the barracks. Now I'm good. I immediately, just because of this, I already have a production advantage because my barracks already started. See, mine are almost done. And I just cancelled his. So to press my advantage, I gotta make sure that my, my marine production is non stop for a little bit. I uh, really gotta focus on that because that's the advantage I'm trying to get. Like if I'm killing SCVs, I'm gonna make sure that I'm making SCVs and that's how you press your advantages, I think. Um, if you're killing depots, make sure you're making depots, stuff like that. Get what your opponent doesn't have. So, um, in this case, I think I'm doing pretty good in this game. I'm gonna go for Banshee, see if he has a lot of turrets or not. If he only has one turret, I can always find a way to put it in a cheeky position and get a, uh, and kill like one or two SCVs, just kind of be annoying, forcing to multitask a little bit. It's another thing in StarCraft, you gotta. I think is to force multitask out of your opponent. It's not just uh, you multitasking, it's forcing your opponent's multitask, I think. Uh, I think that's probably where you create mistakes. So now I see one turret, I'm like, oh no, there's no turret. Um, so I try and get an advantage. Sort of miss, misclick there, but it's fine. Uh, I see that he is still out of position, so I, I'm pretty sure I can stim in here. Put the tanks in position. I want to put him towards the direction that army's coming from, so towards the right. Try to save that tank right there. He does not pick up there, so that's, that's good for me. Don't know why I do this, where I pick it up. I think I just wanted to get it out in the rain, but I don't know. And fingers just move by himself. So now I have three tanks in pretty good position. Um, I gotta make sure that I'm pressing an advantage, so I gotta get some sort of advantage that he does not have. I'm sieging his third, and so I am, so I'm denying expansion. My advantage is to make an expansion, so that's what I do. I make the expansion. Um, gotta make sure also and um, keep that production up. See, so he doesn't have a lot of Vikings, so this is my opportunity. I can go to the high ground, where it takes a little bit for him to travel with his marines. So, 
trying to shell some uh, the fire with the tanks. On you. I can do it again. But at least that we can tank unless he repairs them. Then so good. I didn't notice he killed the SV on the command center there. Ready for dust off. Try not get supply blocked. Just, uh, supply depots I was doing a pretty good, pretty damn good job that day. So uh, I think this game is about pressing, pressing the advantage, and this is where the things that when your advantage is so pressed, that is when you can expect doom counterattacks. Um, Right now it's still not the case. It's like kind of uh yeah, on that position. So eventually he breaks it. Um but that's fine. I guess. It's not on two factories. Um but I can go for a counterattack. Hopefully what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to pull him on two fronts a little bit. Um because I know my army is slightly bigger. Like I I uh, there's points in the game where you know you have supply advantage. So, this is where I can sort of attack, but not really, because as soon as he sees the scan, it's like, oh, he's trying to go for the bottom. Um, Where's the emergency? Just a little bit kind of attack. Just be annoying for some multitask again, as I was saying. And the tank is right there, pick up. Sort of mess up here a little bit, but uh. So he was micro. Kind of Tank, no, shoot it! Oh no, there's one shot away. I was sure I could take at least two. Anyway, that was fun. <laughs> kind of fun little train. So, uh, tank's going on. Gotta keep that production going. Now this is the point in the composition where you're like, I have enough medevacs, I have enough marines. Uh, do I have enough tanks, or do I have enough vikings? And I think at this point I invested so much in air that I don't want my army to be too, too flimsy, so I filled up more with the marines. At this point, I'm pretty confident. We got a pretty damn huge army. So I'm gonna go for this attack towards the top side. Just because last time I checked, he was defending his natural, because that's where I was sort of lenient to go. To go on. Um, I am gonna scan before I go in. Very, very soon. And of course, do not ever go into an engagement without presieging your tanks. And, you know, Unless he, for some reason, he has like a lot of Vikings, and it's just not worth it. But I see this, I can uh, safely stim, and it's about getting the position of those tanks, which is behind my marines, but just far forward enough. Make sure to pull back, and this is where I know I have the advantage. Like, I have a fourth base, and he doesn't even have a third base. So now this is where my advantage becomes so big. That he is going to do a uh, a doom drop. Um, I thought at first he was going to do a counter attack, but he ends up pulling his entire army to the bottom. Um, so I can do this again because I know he doesn't have any turrets. And it really is like points at these that you should be like, there's no way. And my advantage is so big that I gotta I gotta absolutely defend. Which end up semi happening. I know his entire army would be there, so. So that was a sort of a bad trade, in my opinion. I don't know if I cancelled that, I don't remember. But uh, at this point I should have pulled my army slightly. My party should have been uh, pulling my army, so my army back. But I think what I do instead is I, uh, I just drop his main before he tries to get tanks. Because uh, in base trade, it's always really good when you get tanks in your main base. Because it's always hard to go up the ramp and stuff. So, uh, I stop that from happening. I relocate that base. Now I'm just teaching my fourth, which is that's probably the least important part because mining is not the most important right now. What's most important is the production and um, the army positioning. What's going on? Yeah, to go to turrets, I do this a little bit late, because I'm like, what would he do right now? He would probably doom drop me. And uh, I think of that a little bit late, I could have thought of that a lot earlier. Um, unfortunately, see those turrets do not have time to go down. If they did go down, that would have been a lot easier of a hold. Go in there, so then I have to go all the way around now. 
Um, this is where the buildings become not necessary anymore. Uh, Vikings here help me a lot in this base trade. Especially in a defensive manner. Be careful. So I don't know, I look my barracks got it. They have no more use in my base. I don't need to make more marines. I know I have enough stuff, so the point is just to save them and uh, go with them for the natural. Um, now the the thing is to defend and find all the bases at the same time. And you have to go you have to find the bases relatively early because give them slightly too much time then they're gonna have uh, you don't want them to restart their infrastructure. So I kinda missed my drop at the bottom at the top uh, left of that engagement, and it's gonna die as you can see, it's gone. So that was a bit sloppy by me. But at least he's sort of backed up into a corner, and I, uh, I have this base, so that's good. I just gotta find the other base, because I know he does have one. Um, at this point, it's really good because he, no, he has no Vikings. Here I lift up a building, so I can, since I don't have any air either, I kinda need vision from the high ground, just make sure I have constant vision. And, um,. So I use a barracks. So I was, at first I looked at the support, but I'm like, maybe I'll need the support. So I looked up the barracks. Uh, I need more tanks right now than anything else. But at this point, I got the advantage. I can just pick off that tank. There's three more tanks left, and uh, I found this base. So I think this is kind of a study on how to press your advantages and how to uh, how to kind of go about that base trade. Um, really is important to find that base as, as soon as possible. I think that in terms of base trade, so far what I have in priorities is to halt production. So if you can, um, get on top of those barracks at the, as soon as possible. You want to kill all the barracks, make them float. You really do not want him to start tank production because tank production on defense is really good and really efficient. Um, after that, part two is uh, probably scouting for the base as you're trying to defend, and part three is defending. Uh, well, not defending, as you're defending, but I mean, like, part three is to uh, attack the, uh, the newly located base as soon as possible.